You're listening to Freedom Discourse, the new podcast on Freedom First Network that brings conservative guests you need to hear to the forefront. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Freedom Discourse. Uh, my name is Jeff Dornick. I'm the host for today. Again, this is this is a show where we just we have a bunch of different conversations. This is more topic driven. Uh, and so J- J.D. Rucker and I, we kind of take turns going back and forth between uh, hosting this show. But uh, it's always it's always a good, uh, interesting show. Dive into a lot of really interesting issues and important issues as well. Uh, before we get started as well, just wanted to remind everybody, uh, if you guys can go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to Freedom Discourse there, it really helps uh, so that way you guys are hearing every time I come out with a new episode. And then if you guys would like more information on what we're doing here with Freedom First Network, go to freedomfirstnetwork.com. We've got a great lineup of different shows and podcasts including my other show, Freedom One-on-One. We've got J.D. Rucker Show, Knock Report. We've got Bob and Eric Save America, two mics with Michael Schuer and Colonel Mike, just a bunch of awesome shows. Check that out um, and uh, and definitely subscribe. It really helps us out as well. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, happy to introduce our guest for today. Uh, we're bringing on uh, Melanie Infinger. Uh, welcome to Freedom Discor- Discourse. Glad we could sit down. It's a serious topic we're going to be dealing with, and, but it's really important, I think, for people to understand. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. And so, you know, I wanted to first off and, you know, I was kind of telling you a little bit before we come on, I wanted to give you a chance to kind of share your story because it's a tragic story, but it's also it's something that's important for people to understand, like what's actually going on with the criminal justice system and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of give people an understanding of of what you went through and what's going on. Absolutely. Um, My uh, beautiful daughter, um, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Rose, um, uh, she was uh, uh, 20-year-old mother, um, had a, at the time a beautiful eight-month-old daughter, Alexis, um, uh, and my granddaughter. Um, and she had about a year and a half, well, um, prior to August 3rd, um, for about a year and a half, um, roughly, um, she was in a relationship. Um, she um, met her, um, who, who were to, was to become her husband, Alex Guajardo, um, uh and uh, they uh, met, and their uh, relationship uh, progressed pretty rapid, rapidly. Um, and uh, I mean, they she and she found out she was pregnant with Alexis. Um, I, I, I want to say even like maybe three months or so into the relationship, um, and then it kind of took off from there. It was kind of like you know, pregnancy, marriage. Um, it, I would from the from probably the first within about a month um two weeks to a month we started seeing i saw some pretty major red flags um you know what she was seeing as someone who was just so over the top kind and just surprising her things that she wasn't used to like she's like she's like mom like he's he's so nice like i'm not used to this like he's just you know showing up at my work unannounced you know like he's like surprising me like leaving me notes with my coworkers. Just a little bit things like I was like, hmm, you know, like he just and even to me, like when I met him the first time, he he just kind of seemed over the top, just so, so, so nice. And I just was like someone who's come from, uh, you know, abusive relationships myself. Um, I um, and, you know, being the age I am, um, I, I've been the naive one. I've been the one that, you know, trusted too easily. And so I, I saw I saw. The red flags but then when my parents met him they really saw the red flags i mean so you know like my parents have always said to me when it comes to my boyfriends and you know people i've dated in the past they're always the first ones to go yeah like he's not the one and i'm like oh no you just don't know him and that's kind of where we were with alex like um you know i, I kind of saw like some things that i was like um you know i wanted her to be happy and wanted to be happy for her but I mean, it was like moved fast and he was very, very jealous, um, very controlling. Um, you know, uh, I mean, it got to where it was like very early on, like he was answering her phone for her, um, weird stuff, like stuff that I'm like, why? Like she was never alone, could never be alone and talk to me. Like, I mean, she was weird. It was like, I was like, why is he always answering your phone? Like, why is he have to always be in the room? Like, like, it's like he didn't, he was, it was a constant, like, a, we just saw this control. And so she, you know, she, she wanted to be loved and she, she wanted the, the family. She wanted the, you know, she was pregnant, you know, she wanted to have the marriage and the kids. And she saw, you know, she saw where they both, you know, um, 
were young and, and she just kind of saw some, you know, faults and some things they needed to work on. But like most women in abusive relationships, like we, we see the good and we don't want to see the bad. Like we, you think that we're young, we're going to get through it. He's going to change. And so we saw the control. We saw the isolation. We saw the jealousy. Um, we saw the red flags pretty early on. Um, biggest red flag, first red flag um, was when he killed their first cat. Um, you know, uh, we, um, I got a phone call one day, Caitlin told me that, I mean, her kittens were her babies. This is both, this is when she was pregnant with Alexis and, and she told me that he like bashed the cat's face in and like killed the cat. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know, someone who watches true crime and I, she's the one that got me into true crime. Like we all know people who kill cats, kill people. And that was where my first my first thing I thought of was like, I was like, Caitlin, like, this is not normal. Like, this is not like, and, and you know, of course, I'm like, well, well, explain to me, like, what led up to it? Like, explain to me, like, was he like, like, what was, did, I mean, what did the cat do? Or what, what was his reason? Like, what did he say after he did it? And she was like, mom, it, that's the thing is, it's like, it was a normal day. I like walked out of the room and went downstairs and she was like, and I heard the cat squeal and went upstairs and, I mean, and just opened the door and the cat was dead. And I'm like, it was just the craziest. So then, it, so that's kind of where the big, big red flag, obviously, when we knew that it's, I was really scared. I mean, it wasn't just control and jealousy. There's the violence now, like, you know, to animals and, and that's not okay. And that's, you know, so I immediately went into major mom mode, like, you know, oh my gosh, like, Caitlin, he can kill you. He can kill your unborn child. Like, you know, what is he going to do if he can't, if he's going to kill a kitten, what is he going to do when you have a kid? You know, and that was like, I, I just, so from that moment on, it was complete fear. Um, and then he like got really upset with her for obviously for telling me like she basically was shut up. Like I wasn't supposed to tell anyone like this moment that, that, that he found out that I knew that, that my, my daughter, my other daughter, Caitlin's sister knew, um, and my parents knew because we're all a very close knit family. And so, of course, you know, we all were freaking out. So it was like a big deal. Like he was so upset with her. Like she, they, they, he, she had to come and like have an immediate talk with me and say, you can never let this go beyond us. Like he's so upset. Like he's apologized. And, you know, and, and that's not who he is. And so that was our first, that was our very big thing. So then, so kind of like turning it around like we were overreacting and like it was he it, he wasn't like really that kind of person and and um it was just going to be brushed under the rug well obviously to us it was not brushed under the rug we were freaking out so that happened um then she um she had alexis um alexis was born in november of 18 um beautiful my beautiful grandbaby and um and so she had Alexis and, um, after, and then we, um, in February, uh, because in August she was murdered. So in February before the August, um, we, act, I got a phone call at work that, you know, it, she's like, mom, I'm in the car with Nana and Papa on the way to the ER. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She texts me a picture of her face. She can barely open her eyes. Her nose is almost broken. She's black and blue. She's like, we got in a fight. He took it too far this time. Well, at this moment in time, I had no idea that he was being violent towards her. I had, um, so that's when it all kind of came out. That's when she was started to talk to me and, and opened up to me. Of course, she, she didn't up to this point because she knew how, she, how freaked out I was about the cat. And I kept warning her and kept telling her, like, this isn't going to get better. This is going to get worse. And, you know, she's 20 and she's like, mom, let me live my life. Let me make my mistakes. You know, that everything's fine. Like, it's going to be fine. I promise it's not who he is. So, so once this happened, I'm like, okay, Caitlin, like, God, like, I, I was like devastated. I mean, I saw her, I knew it. I, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and she said, mom, this is, you know, this has been going on like almost every weekend. She was like the violence, the, the, the abuse, um, you know, and she said, it's just never been this bad and it's never been this visible you know like she was able to kind of like hide it um and uh so i begged her i mean i mean me and my mom we were all on the phone like she's at the er begging her to press charges we're like you have got to press charges like he needs to be held accountable she was like like 
like women in domestic abuse situations. Um, she was scared. She didn't want to, you know, press charges. She still truly believed that he was going to change. So she didn't press charges. Um, and in that moment at the ER, she found out she was pregnant again. She was from, she found out she was pregnant with her second child. And, um, that was in February. Well, um, the next day, I mean, she spent the night at our, uh, that night, the next day, it was that quick, the manipulation, the I'm sorry, the I love you, the, the typical, you know, abuser, um, reeled her back in, she came, um, and, I mean, it's like she woke up and within a few hours, he was promising her the world, and she came over, and I was in tears because she was take, she was going back to his back, I mean, she was taking him back, and I was like, and I, and I really knew I just knew her way of thinking. She found out she's pregnant. She didn't want to be a single mom. And later she tells, she's like, mom, you know, she just wanted him to change. And she really want, thought that they were going to get through this, what she thought was just, you know, a phase or, um, it was horrible. I was, I, I, I just knew I was like the next, I, I, and I told them after that, I mean, I, I had talks with him. I had talks with her. We had sit downs like the next, like you realize, like I, t I told him like, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're, you, you obviously can snap and kill her because, like, she was near death that night. Like, I mean, it was like a, a how bad does it have to get? And I, I even remember telling Caitlin several times, Caitlin, like, how bad does it have to get? Like, she's like, well, mom, I'm giving him one more chance, like, one more chance. And she kept saying, one more chance. And if he does it again, I'm like, but he's gonna end up killing you. Like, he's gonna, like, the, you know, that's that these things don't end well. And police actually told her that, like, in the hospital, they told her, like, you know, um, you know, we had to have, we had one incident where I had to go pick her up at a restaurant because he was so plastered drunk and was uh, manhandling her and wanted to drive them home. And she had to have me come and get her. And that's the time when he got the DWI and the, um, he left the scene of an accident. That was right off, that was right in the middle of this. And um, that was his first PR bond that he got out on. And, um, but in that moment, we actually had a welfare check done on the child um, there on Alexis at his parents' house. And because I was worried he was gonna go grab Alexis. And, um, and whenever all that went down, um, Oh, I totally lost just from my train of thought. Anyways, okay, so I'm getting totally off track. So what I'm trying to say is um, we had the ER incident. Um, the, the, the That's when we knew the abuse was really happening. Um, he manipulated her back in. To, um, she took him back. Um, and within about a week and a half, she miscarried that second child. Um, she was in complete denial that it was um, he was the cause of it. Um, I know the details of the abuse. She told me of every, you know, all what happened the night he abused her that night. And, and, and I absolutely believe, and I think she in the heart of hearts knew that he caused the miscarriage of that second child. Um, so she miscarried, and that was in March. She miscarried that second child in March. And um, and so this is when it, things were really bad. I mean, you know, she had taken him back, miscarried, you know, um, she was in a, a very bad place. Um, you know, she was opening up to me more, um, and, and just was so confused, but just really want, really wanted it to work out, really loved him, really felt like, you know, he was going to change again. And, um, and she, they separated. I mean, she, she was, she, you know, said, mom, you know, that's it. Like I, I told him I gave him one more chance. Like, and you know, he, he, he messed it up and she came over to my house and stayed with me with Alexis for a good month or so. And we went out to eat one day and I'll never forget it. We were eating, me and her sister and her were sitting eating and she tells me she's pregnant, a third pregnancy. And I lost it because to me, it was a way of him in, of, of a control with him. I felt like whether it was cats or her getting pregnant or buying her, you know, because he'd buy her cats, he would kill the cats. He would get her pregnant. You know, she would, you know, I just felt like it was a constant um, control. I mean, it was like, you know, he knew if he got her pregnant, she was going to take him back. And, uh, you know, because she didn't want to be a single mom and she wanted the family and she didn't want to be alone and she just wanted to be loved. And she was the most loving, compassionate person and the most forgiving person. Um, and she just, you know, I mean, he had all of the, uh, you know, the abuser red flags. You know, he, he did all of it. You know, he promised her the world. I just cried in that moment. I'll never forget. She we. We look back on it now, and even that, like the few days after that, I mean, it, she was she would laugh at me because she's like, "Mom, 
like when I told you, like I was crying so much that the waiter came and brought us free ice cream. It was kind of funny. It was like, cause I was crying because I was so upset because I knew that she was going to take him back. And I just looked at her and I was like, please God, tell me this does not mean you're going to take him back. Like, I mean, we can do this. Like you can do this on your own. You don't need him. And she just looked at me and like, yeah, like mom, I, I have to, it's my family. Like, you know, like, and he's going to change and he's going to go get help. And it was like, of course I, I, I love my grandchildren, you know, I'm my grandchild and I would have loved to, and I wanted to be happy for her, but I feared for her safety and her children's safety. And that was the biggest thing. And so I wanted to be happy for her. And obviously I was, we were, we were planning a gender reveal. I was, you know, really trying to be happy about this baby and support her in any way, shape or form opening to always her knowing that no matter what, like she has a safe haven at home. She knows that she can always come to me because it got really bad to where she kind of got like where mom, you know what? I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want any more of the lectures. I don't want to, I don't I already know how you feel about Alex. And she would shut, she got to where she was really shutting me out. And she was like, if I, mom, we're in an argument. I need you to come get me. He just strangled me, but I don't want you to ask any questions when I get there. Like, in other words, she knew she wasn't going to leave him. So she was like, I don't, I, you know, like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but right now I need you to come and get me. So I did. So I'm like, I told her if that's what it takes to keep you safe, I will come and get you at whatever time you need me to come get you. So I've had, you know, I went several times and I, I, I got her from the apartment, her and Alexis. And, um, and so that, um, uh, so yeah, so she was pregnant with the third child, um, and um, after they they she lived with me when they were separated. Found out she was pregnant, and then it was shortly. Um, it was like about I want to say she was here about a month, and I guess a few weeks after she found out she was pregnant with the third child, um, they actually got an apartment, and um, and that was her first apartment. Um, that was she was so I mean that was a big thing for her. I mean that was her first you know her little humble home, and she just had this vision, and she just loved. She just loved being a mom to Alexis and, and she, but she was, she was the supporter. She was that she, um, she's, the, she is the one, like in other words, um, I hate I don't know how to say this, but, um, Alex didn't work. Alex worked a, a few days out of their entire relationship. Um, her, uh, sadly, um, Caitlin's father passed when she was, um, like around 14. And so, um, she, lived off of, uh, I mean, they were living off of her father's, you know, which she got out of uh, insurance settlement from her father. Um, and so that was always a concern of ours too, because going into the relationship when she met him, like, you know, I told, we always told her we didn't think it was a good idea that she let anyone know that, you know, she has this money that, you know, that, um, and so she, so he, he didn't work. I mean, she, she showered him with anything he wanted. I mean, you know, that she supported him. She, that was her apartment in her mind, you know, I mean, he didn't work. I mean, she paid for everything. And, um, and so paid for her own wedding ring. I mean, she did all of it. So, um, so we, uh, she was, so that was her, uh, that was her apartment. You know, she was um, very excited about it. I was trying to, you know, be excited for her, just praying and praying and praying and praying and praying for her safety and for Alexis's safety. Um, and this new baby safety. And, um, and we we're, I was planning a gender reveal, um, great gender reveal. Um, and, uh, you know, it was literally just, we were going to Hobby Lobby, you know, doing Pinterest things. I mean, just the fun mom, daughter, you know, she was my best friend. We did everything together. And, um, and I was, you know, just very involved, you know, always taking, you know, take, helping her with Alexis and, um, and then she calls me up one more Wednesday morning and she's, and she's like, um, mom, um, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, what's up? She was like, are you at work? And she said, uh, she said, mom, Alex, you know, um, he, um, beat me up on Monday. And she said, so I, I, I got a hotel and I've been at a hotel for two days. She was like, um, to, to get away from him. And she was like, I didn't want, you know, she didn't call me and tell me she was like, she don't need to worry or, you know, freak out because she was in a hotel. She was safe. He didn't know where she was. And she said, but she came back home to the apartment Wednesday morning and walked into another of their, one of her kittens, a, a cat, another cat that he had gotten her or, um, was tortured um, and in a bag of bleach. And so she had called the cops on him and to have him arrested for killing the cat. Well, she's like, mom, they wouldn't arrest him for the cat. She was like, so I told them if they're not going to arrest him for the cat, 
then they need to arrest him for beating me up. And like, she showed them, you know, the marks on her face from where he had hit her in the face. And, um, they took pictures and they arrested him for assault. And, um, I was just so proud of her as a mom, as someone, you know, who had for all this time, we had begged her to stand up to him. We had begged her like, he needs to be held accountable. You need to protect your babies. You need to protect yourself. Like he's going to end up killing you. Like we, that was what we told her. Like this was like an answer to our prayers. We thought this was it. Like that he, he was in jail. Like, you know, he had, um, I immediately on the way to her house called SPCA and like, you know, filed a huge complaint about the cat being killed and then not pressing charges. That was a huge thing for me. Yeah, and, um, and, and also too, like w with that specific situation, what was it that the police was saying about not arresting him for the the animal abuse and and the killing of cats and all that kind of stuff because because from what i understand like that in and of itself is a felony let a, let alone you know a crime in and of itself exactly and that's and that's what we thought i mean that's exactly what i was thinking and, and and believe me it was brought up to the da's office and i was on the phone i mean so many times like fighting i like, trying to figure out what in the world happened with that like like could this have changed things would this have uh, um, and the very, the first few responses that I got, well, the very first response was that they had called the DA, like, you know, in front of Caitlin and the DA's office is the one that said that they couldn't press the charges on the cat. So I'm thinking, how does that even make sense? It's a, it's a, it's a felony. Like I mean, people who kill cats kill people. Like it's people know it's, that's why it's a, it's, that's horrible. Like you don't like, you know, so yeah. So I, I have since the criminal case has been open, talked to the DA about it. And, um, and they said that they've actually admitted that it, it was a mistake and that the person handling it that day, that they did make a mistake and it, it should have absolutely been um, dealt with differently. Um, but I will say they did tell me they don't think it would have made a difference in the long run because they said that kind of case, even though the SPCA acted immediately. And by the time I got to Pasadena to her apartment, like they were already like taking the cat back out of the dumpster, like in like for the opening again investigation up. Like so they because I called open an investigation. Well, the DA said that um, those kind of things and charges, it is an investigation. So she said it wouldn't have maybe been in the paperwork, you know, a few days later when all this went down. So I, so I still wonder, you know, it still angers me because I feel like that was huge. Um, it's a felony. Um, so not only did he, um, so at, when he was arrested, he was arrested for domestic, for assault on Caitlin and, but they knew about the cat. So obviously they knew about that. Um, he had an open DWI and an open hit and run on his record from months, just a few months prior to that, um, where he was let out on a PR bond, a free bond. So he was already had a, had, if he went before a judge or a magistrate, if they were to look at his records, he was he was a violent criminal. He was a you know someone that obviously is a danger to society. Um, you know he, it, it, I, I didn't even know these PRs existed until this happened. But okay, well, can, can um, you and can you explain for people what is a PR bond? Because everybody always just hears bail bond and all that kind of stuff. But what specifically is a PR bond? A PR bond is a, it's basically, it's a personal recognizance, which is a promise to appear in court. And basically you don't have to pay a dime. Like you sign a piece of paper saying you're going to go to court and you get off. It's like a get out of jail free card. That is exactly what it is. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's that they even, the justice system to me, there's what, where's the justice in that at all? Like why are the, to me, why are cops arresting people and criminals and just risking their lives for, you know, for a magistrate or a judge to basically say, oh, okay, you can, you know, here you go, just sign this piece of paper and go on your merry way and go commit some more crimes. I mean, that's basically the way I look at it. And, um, and so um, the nightmare, um, I mean, like uh, it, that Wednesday morning, like, like I said, is when it all kind of, it's a spiral from there. Um, he got arrested. Um, I talked to her, I don't know how many times on the phone, like, you know, went to her apartment so many times just checking on her, you know, seeing how she's doing, um, making sure that, you know, like that she's definitely like, it's over. Like, is this, this is it, right? Like this is, she's like, yeah, mom, it's really over. Like, you know, cause I found out they had talked on the phone. Like he had called from jail and I'm like, oh gosh, please God, you know? And she's like, no mom, he's, she even said, she said, mom, he's facing, you know, 
a felony and three misdemeanors. And and she said, Mom, I'm going to be fine. She was like, he is in jail. He's not getting out. Like, he's, he, you know, he's going to go before a judge, and they're not going to let him out because he's facing all these charges. And, um, and there was just that part inside of me. I just was so scared. And I, and, I, and I was scared that someone was going to bail him out. That was my fear. Like, you know, a family, a friend. I just had this fear that he was going to get out some way, somehow, and, and, and then he was going to kill her. Like, because he was going to, I just, that was my biggest fear was, I, and I begged her. The last time I saw her, which was um, the Thursday before she was murdered, um, she was murdered on a Saturday. I saw her on Thursday. I actually went and I had called her from work and I said, babe, like, what can I do? Like, you know, because she was pregnant. She was like, you know, hormonal. She was depressed. She was upset, obviously, with everything going on. And I'm like, look, anything I can do, what can I do to help you? Me to cook for you? Like, you know, I was like, what do you need me to do? Like, you know, I mean, she wouldn't come home. Because that was, like I said, her apartment. She was proud of it. She wanted to stay there. She was a very strong woman. She didn't want to feel, she didn't want to feel like she was, like, she felt like, you know, this is my home. Like, I'm not leaving. Like, he's leaving. Like, you know, like, I'm, this is me and my kids are going to be here and I have a plan. And she was just like, you know, I'm not letting him win. Like, you know, um, and so she I said, please just come home. Please just come with me. And she's like, mom, no. And so I said, well, let me at least take some stress off of you and like, you know, let me come get Alexis. And she's like, okay, if you, that would be great. Like, you know, that will help me. I can get some rest, you know, so cause Alexis was eight months old at the time. I went and picked up Alexis. That was on a Thursday. And I just remember, um, you know, our last hug, I remember um, our last words, you know, I'm just telling her, please, you know, know that she can call me if she ever needed, if you need anything at all. I'd be there in a heartbeat and she knew I would. And I said, you know, just, and she just, I remember her, she didn't want to be alone at her apartment, but yet she didn't want, but she didn't want to come to my house. Like she wanted to stay, but she didn't want to be alone. So she was on the phone with me a lot. And, um, and actually her stepmom and, um, her brother actually drove in from Louisiana that Friday to come be with her. And so, um, and, and I kept Alexis. Well, uh, because I had missed so much work during the week, I had to, I don't normally work on a Saturday, but I actually was working on Saturday to make up hours from, you know, being at her apartment so much and kind of helping her out. And um, I had like, I went to her apartment and helped clean up where he had like, you know, killed the cat and like they, he was arrested. And um, Saturday I get a phone call and um, I'm working. And um, I, I honestly, in the in. I had just got notification from, from her stepmom that he had gotten out. Like I, I was literally like, I was an hour, you know, from home. I was um, in my car and she, um, you know, tells me that he got out and I'm like, how in the world did he get out? Like I'm freaking out and she's out and that no one knows at this point how he got out. Like, you know, um, when he got out, how he got out, um, we, uh, Caitlin, uh, we had just, it was like, I think, um, around one or two that I, um, that I had talked to the stepmom and I had just talked to Caitlin that morning that she had picked up Alexis from my house that morning. Um, I was at work when she picked up Alexis, my parents lived next door. So my parents actually had the baby for, um, I took 30 minutes, like, you know, after I had left. So Caitlin actually got the baby from them and they, they said she was like on cloud nine. They said they had never seen her so happy. They said that Melanie, she just was glowing. She was free. She was starting over, you know, she just, like, you could tell, like, they said they had, they hadn't seen her so happy in so long. And they, she just gave everybody hugs and, you know, told her about how much she loved them. And, and, uh, anyways, it was just, that was, um, it, you know, she was starting over and that, that's what's so hard is because she stood up to him. She had him arrested. She felt protected. The justice system completely failed her because Saturday I get a phone call about, I don't know, three, three years, three thirty, And I was panicking because as soon as I got the phone call that I knew he was out, I immediately started calling Caitlin. I immediately started texting Caitlin. I was getting no response, no response, no response. And I just, I just knew something really bad must have happened because he had a habit of taking her phone away from her when they would fight. Like he would take her phone away. Um, so she couldn't call me. So she couldn't call. And and so I, I, I just knew that's what had happened. And I'm like, he got to where he took her phone from her. And so I was on the phone with my parents in a full blown panic. Like, what do I do? Like, do I drive to Pasadena? Because I was a good hour and a half from her. I was like, do I do I drop everything? Do I go to Pasadena? Do I wait to hear from her? Like, what do I do? What do I do? And, um, 
and I get an unknown call on my phone and there's just something in me. I told my parents, I said, I have to answer this phone call. I normally wouldn't have answered unknown calls. I said, but it could be Caitlin calling from her neighbor's phone or someone else's phone, you know, because he has her phone. And, um, and I, I answered the phone and, and it, and it actually ended up being, um, um, the medical examiner. And, um, at this point I had no idea, um, that anything had happened and they had no idea that I hadn't been informed. Um, but they basically, and they actually stopped in the mid, mid sentence and said, wait, says no one's, no one's um, talked to you about your daughter, Caitlin and finger. And I just started screaming and I'm like, what are you talking about? Where is she? What did he do to her? And, um, and they said, I'm so sorry. We can't, um, we're not supposed to do this this way. And that's when I knew, I knew that they weren't, they weren't, they thought that the police had already told me. And, um, and she said, I have to call you back in five minutes. And I said, no, you cannot call me back in five minutes. I need to know what happened to my daughter. And she did, she made me wait. And I just was on the floor screaming. And, um, and she called me back and said that he had stabbed her to death, her and her baby. Um, he had, she had been stabbed um, 19, about 20 times and slit her throat. And, um, and I just was, I mean, obviously your world stops. Everything goes in slow motion. You feel like you are that, you know, you hear me and her watch true crime shows daily. And I'm just like, you know, this is like a show, like this isn't real. Like this is not us, like we're not, you know, we're living that, you know, this is now our reality. And, and um, it's like, she was finally starting over. Like she had everything, she had everything planned and she was happy and she stood up to him and she felt protected. And, um. And then I, I was so upset, and and I, I obviously after the initial shock, I didn't understand like how in the world he got out, and I was just angry, and I was blaming everybody. Like, was it this person? Was it this person who got him out? You know, and it wasn't until Bruger, the police chief at Pasadena, got on TV and outrage at the fact that he was given another PR bond. He was given another get out of jail free card. He was given another, he, they let him out um, without having to pay anything um, to go murder her. I mean, they basically like, he's an a, abusive man that drinks and drives. That's already been get, given a PR bond. He's given a chance. So you mean to tell me that you're going to give violent criminals that, you know, just hours earlier, you know, I mean, we're abusing their wife and, and her child and, and you're just going to give them a slap on the wrist and say, sign this piece of paper and come back to court. Like, where's the, I don't, there's no justice in that. Right. I mean, it was so uncalled for and um, just so angry. And um, she, I mean, I had, like I said, before this happened, I didn't even know that PR bonds existed. It, I, I, it was just mind boggling. When I found out that they let him out, like, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, my, I'm like, I'm her mother and I begged her to have him arrested. Like I begged her, like, this is what she had been trying to, she had been scared all this time to press charges. And then she finally like got so brave and did it thinking that, you know, we, she did the right thing. And then she gets out and he murders her because it's like, they didn't even make him stay in jail. Yeah, and that, mm. and that that's what doesn't make sense. I feel like about all of this because because from from a certain standpoint, I understand why why the justice system would have PR bonds in the sense of for like you know small crime, you know especially with uh, you know prisons that are overcrowded. Like it logically makes sense. But the thing I don't understand is how you jump to make that apply to a violent criminal. And I, th and I think that that's the thing that is mind boggling to me about about this case specifically. Now, did you ever get an explanation of why they decided to go with the PR bond on this in this case? No, and that's and um we it, it is uh I mean it's still I mean I've never I haven't to this day I mean uh, gotten answers as far as I mean it, it it's uh, like you said there is always there's gonna be always be those people like you know that are all up before PR bonds and and I and, and they're like you know it's about discrimination and it's about keeping the rich people were able to get out and the poor people stayed in jail I absolutely understand yes we need a we need a bail system we do need PR bonds like I understand where how it started 
and I understand in most states the way that it actually is practiced and in the and it's but but the in Harris County especially and in New York and I mean there's certain parts of, of the United States that it's really gone wrong the pendulum has swung entirely the wrong way and and what it is is it's um, it was supposed to be for non-violent crimes. Um, and obviously, Alex was a violent criminal. I mean, not just a violent criminal. You shouldn't be given two back-to-back -back PR bonds. I mean, it's like back-to-back. -back. I mean, um, why are these criminals, like, why would they stop committing crimes if they just think they're going to just keep getting out of jail? I mean, it's like, and it's happening all over. So my, my, my mission, I mean, I, and I've totally channeled my grief and, and, and my passion and my and my gift of gab, I guess you could say. Um, I've got, I'm loud and I talk a lot. And so I, I've really tried to use that to help. I mean, if we, we can just help one one life, you know, one person, um, you know, to stop, you know, these PR bonds from happening. Um, I'm praying. It's sad that my daughter, you know, is the face and has to be of how the example of how bad the PR system has become. Um, but it, it's like these elected officials, I mean, they, I, I often wonder, I mean, when is it going to stop? I mean, is it going to be when your child, you know, when is it, is it when your child is, 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 is stabbed to death or murdered? Is that when the wake up call is? Because it's like my daughter, my daughter, my and my granddaughter were taken from me, you know, and I do absolutely believe she would still be here and they'd still be here if he had been, if he had been kept in jail. And my new mission is to get a law change called Caitlin's Law. And um, and that is to make sure that um, these criminals are not given back-to-back -back PR bonds. And if there is any ar assault arrest, that they are not given PR bonds. Um, in my case, I mean, in Alex's case, he was, a, the DA actually, actually posted a bond. I mean, they had a bond set for 50000 um, And then the magistrate, like, then overturned it and like gave him a PR bond. In other words, like the DA actually did try to, to give him a high, a higher, a high bond. Um, and then it was like, they didn't even look at his record. And that's another thing with Caitlin's laws. I have in there that they need to, there needs to be, you know, they need to see in front of them, these criminals and the history. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, there's cases that recently just happened here. I mean, here just um, in Houston, I mean, um, where a man had 70, 70 arrests on his record, 70, and was given two back-to-back -back PR bonds and stabbed a, a, a poor woman to death in a Walgreens parking lot. I mean, it's just like, how does that even happen? I mean, and so Caitlin's Law, I'm praying, I'm praying it gets, it gets passed so that, you know, around, I mean, not just in Harris County, around the world, that so that um, these magistrates and these judges um, think twice before you know, letting these criminals back out in the streets. I mean, it's like you said, there is a, a reason for PR bonds, but it should, but in, in Caitlin's case, it, um, it absolutely should not have been given to Alex. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so in, in essentially your proposal f with, with Caitlin's law, right? So, so the main, the main, the main focus would be if, if they have a criminal background, right? So that, that would be one change. What would be, what would be some of the other, like more logistical changes that would be coming into effect with something like Caitlin's law? Um, well, absolutely. The biggest thing is that uh, it's where it used to be like this. So, like once you're given the one PR, like like he had, you know, for the um, prior arrest, he was given a PR. So it's like once you're given a, a chance, um, you commit another crime, then you don't get another PR bond. Like you need to serve your time. And so, uh, so that is a, a big thing with Caitlin's law is to make sure that they are not given another PR after another one. Like if you go out and become another crime, you sit and you have to stay in jail. Um, and uh, and some kind of system, they, there has to be a, a, a better system. So I know that they there is some kind of system there that they say um, that I've talked to lawyers and I'm, I have a big team of people that kind of, and bail people that have helped me a lot kind of know how it works and how this kind of stuff um, happens. And there is a system out there, but it's not like it's a very um, it's supposed to show like, you know, like a, a number, like a have a risk, like a risk assessment before they let out these criminals. But it's not like true. In other words, like it's not true to like their true criminal history. Like it's kind of like a very warped system. So um, so that and that's um, been a problem for, you know, 
a, a long time. So I'm trying to get a better system so they are, that we know that they're looking at the criminal histories um, of these individuals that are being arrested. And absolutely, without a doubt, I mean, I made sure in there that it was any type of assault, any type of assault. Uh, on anyone. I mean, you're if you're assaulting someone, you're violent, you should not be given a PR bomb. Like you need to, if you do the crime, you serve the time and you sit in jail. And that's, that's the way the justice system should be. Like I, I speak out for not just my daughter, but for all the women that are, you know, domestically abused. And like my daughter are scared. They're scared to have them arrested. They're scared for their safety. They're scared. And 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 it's like I, I've asked many people, I mean, since this happened, it's like, and you wonder why. You wonder why women don't have their abusers arrested. I mean, my look, my poor daughter did it did and she now is murdered because y'all did not do your job and protect my daughter and my unborn grandchild. Like you let him out of jail. Yeah, well, and, and that se- that seems to be the concern in general with with the justice system right now. I think I think for a lot of people, you know, conservatives as well, like like my audience, very conservative audience, you know, things like that. I think one of the concerns that we have in general with the justice system is that it seems like they're they're more focused on what's fair for the criminal as opposed to what's going to protect people the most. And I feel like as as I talk to people and hear people's stories and things like that, it seems like it the, it's always falling on the side of the bad guy, not on the side of the victim. And I think that that's something that we as a society, we need to figure out how do we actually get this back to where it's actual justice and not always, and, and I know we gotta have justice for the criminal, make sure you know innocent until proven guilty and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we got to make sure we're, we're protecting the victims too. And I think that right now, the justice system, in in many circumstances, is failing the victims. Absolutely, and and that you couldn't have said it more perfectly. And that's why I always, and I've said in many interviews, is it is it's like we're we're they're protecting the criminal. I feel like they they were protecting Alex and not protecting my daughter. They like they are the the victims and that's why I'm, I I will forever be a victim's um advocate, a domestic uh victim, you know, not just a murder, you know, um victim's advocate, but also for domestically abused women because uh, um they you know, the victims need protecting. Um I mean, uh, you know, so many um women are are abused in 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 you know, need it to, they don't have any, and some people don't have like, I mean, you know, a family to turn to and friends. And, um, you know, I've talked to so many women since this happened. I mean, they don't have anywhere to turn and they, and so they turn to the justice system and they see what's happening. And it's like, they don't know what to do. They're lost. I mean, it's like, because they, and I've heard so many stories. I mean, it's just so sad of women's, um, you know, abusers being arrested and, and, and let out. I mean, I mean, I have one woman on a group that I've talked to. I mean, I mean, both of her children, I mean, her, you know, her husband murdered both of her children. I mean, and it just goes on and on and on where the justice systems, I mean, the ju- they're not protecting the victims. I mean, and, and, and sadly, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, she's not here to advocate for herself and she, and, and, um, and so I need to be her voice. Um, she, Loved helping others. She was the sweetest, most kind person I've ever met. And she was the best mom. And now I'm raising her daughter. I mean, I have Alexis and, um, you know, I just see her and her baby girl and she's just the happiest baby. And I think, I know she sees her. I know she sees Caitlin up because she says mama all the time and she looks at her picture and she just, um, she loves to be in her, she loves to play in her bed by herself. And we always joke and I'm like, it's just because I know Caitlin's with her and Kate, she's just, she's just having her alone time with her mama in her bed because I do believe that Caitlin's all around. She gives me signs all the time. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm a woman of, of faith and I absolutely, um, you know, whenever I, 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 I have the PTSD and I think about the trauma and I cry and I get sad, I have to, she quickly reminds me that, um, no, that she's she's smiling from above and um and the angel saved her and that she's not in pain and um and I'm just you know it's just but I just I just don't want anyone else to ever have to suffer through you know what what we have to what she had to go through and what we are going through yeah and uh, what her daughter is gonna have to go through I mean Alexis one day we'll have to find out what true evil is you know that her mother um what the, the, how the justice system failed her mother and that her own father you know brutally murdered her mother i mean like how it's just you know i it's just it, uh, yeah it's, it's just sad 
Yeah, a- absolutely. Now, now is justice being served now w- with Alex? Right? Is he is he going through the court process now? How, how is all that playing out right now? Oh well, um, you know, only a few months after he was in jail, he actually had another felony charge for trying to kill an inmate. Um, so um, and I, they had like I think they found two shanks in his jail. So this is all stuff that I've been told, and the DA's you know told me like you know since he's been arrested. Um, he is in Harris County. Um, surprisingly, crazy, maddening, he has a bond. Capital murder. He's in for capital murder. He took my daughter's life, called 911 on himself, walked out their apartment with blood on his pants. Literally, I mean, the investigator told me he's he's never had such a fast, um, I'm talking like he said, I've never had someone um, admit fault as, as quick as Alex did. I mean, like they sat, they asked for DNA, and Alex said, why do you need DNA? I did it. Like, I mean, basically that was how cold and like, you know, from I mean that's how in in this capital murder he I mean my daughter was um you know four months pregnant I mean he, and then they give him a bond it's unreal I mean it's just maddening I mean that and it's I mean I live in fear daily I've never locked my doors as much as I do now I mean I'm always looking over my shoulder I'm so scared constantly that he's gonna get out and come you know and and and, and kill Alexis we know. And I don't want to go too in detail about their criminal case, but we know it was premeditated. We absolutely um, know that he had planned on Caitlin being at that apartment with Alexis. And at the last minute, Caitlin had a feeling and told her stepmom, here, you take Alexis. I'll let you know when it's safe. And and that's whenever she everything happened and went down. Um, but it was all set up. Like, we absolutely believe it was premeditated. And, I, I, and, I, and that's what it scares me so much that he's going to come and, you know, he's going to get out and he's going to come kill Alexis or, you know, and, and I just, to think that he, and it's to think that he has a bond. It's just, I don't even understand. I, I will never understand that. Yeah. That's just, it, that's just insane. Insane. Really. Um, now dealing with, uh, dealing with Caitlin's law, right? How has the response been? Is it looking positive? Is it looking optimistic that something like that will get passed? I am praying. Um, uh, I mean, I only kind of know what's transpired, obviously, um, you know, since um, we since uh, Kate, uh, Caitlin's murder, um, since I've gotten so involved, um, I've gotten him. I mean, God has put the right people in my path. I feel like, um, you know, um, uh, a lot of people from the bail system, police organizations, um, lawyers um, that, you know, got on my story like immediately and have worked with me um and you know doing these interviews um i mean thank god ken good is the, the lawyer that's been amazing um uh that and he is the one that like you know he set up a you know the website for us and um i had no clue how to do a, i set up a website like i started doing these interviews and he He's like, well, you know, I, I kept told him, I mean, like, I don't know kind of where to direct people. And he was like, I think I can, like, you know, maybe, like, can figure out how to get a website set up for you. And he was able to get the website and the Facebook page set up. And and um, and um so, it, and I feel like we've gotten a, a really good response. Um, I, I mean, I jump in um, at any chance I can, I can, I have to do whatever interview is given, you know, speak, do interviews, reports, um you know, Facebook forums, um, you know, we have the Facebook page, Caitlin Small, that um, has really taken off. Um, most of my interviews are on there. Um, I mean, I do a lot of them. So, um, I mean, the, the first few I did, I was kind of all over the place. And so once I listened to them, I'm like, yeah, I'll put that one on there because I say ums like I say um a lot and I try to get better about that. But um, I do feel like um, we are getting a lot of traction. Um you know, but it, I pray it's enough. I mean, by the time November rolls around, um, I pray and I just hope and pray that we have hit enough and turned um, people's minds around um, because there are some hardcore people out there for PR bonds and they just don't get it. And um, and I just hope and pray that we cha- we can change everyone's minds um, to where it will be passed. Because I know it's something that's been brought to legislation before, like these type of laws, not Caitlin's law in particular. But um, I'm praying that um, Caitlin's story will absolutely 
make a, you know these lawmakers um, see that it's time. It absolutely is time, and justice needs to be served, and these criminals need to stay in jail. I pray. I mean, I, I hope and pray. I mean, we if I have to do an interview, you know, every day until you know it's election time. I mean, whatever I have to do, I will go stand you know, um, and, and yell to the rooftops, you know, to get people to, to hear Caitlin's story, um, if it, you know, to, to, to make a change, um, and, and save some, save lives, because I think that we're going to continue, um, this, this corrupt system is going to, people are going to continually lose their lives, um, until this is changed. Yeah. Now, now is, so is this something that's going to be on, on the ballot for the public to be voting on, or is this something that you guys are trying to get legislators to initiate and, and vote on? Oh, it's it's going to legislation. Legislation, it absolutely okay. is going to. Go, yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, and uh, and um and and I uh, know we, I have, um on a few of my like um interviews um they, we've gotten in touch with um you know um, actual you know people in legislation that are in support. I actually was on a commissioner's call, um recently, um so, I mean I feel like we've got some really big um players in this that have um ken's met with ken's a lawyer that's um really kind of been at the heart of the legislature like you know i I can do the talking and i can spread the story and um but as far as like the back end of it you know i I wouldn't know the first you know i wouldn't know how to really you know how to pass a law or who to talk to so he's been doing all that and and um he keeps me up to date he's um you know definitely had a a lot of um meetings with a lot of important people and um and, and and i'm just you know we're praying that it uh it gets passed. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm just trying to do as many interviews and getting the story out there. And um, we like I said, we post everything, um, all the updates. We definitely post to the Facebook. We didn't do a lot. I haven't done a lot with the with the website because Facebook's, you know, that's where it's all at right now, social media. So um, we, you can go to the website and you know click on the Facebook link and it brings you to the Facebook. But um, that's kind of where we put it, post everything on is the Facebook page. Right, for sure. And then remind everybody as well, you know, uh, how to find the Facebook page and, and also the website if they do want more information as well. And then I'll make sure that we put that we put it in the in the links underneath when we post this as well. Absolutely. Um, the Caitlin's um, website is caitlinslaw.org. Um, and then the Caitlin's Facebook page, you can look it up. It's under Caitlin's Law. Now, my daughter's name um, is especially spelled. She used to tease me about it. She's like, Mom, you... I can never find a keychain with my name on it because it was spelled Caitlin and it's C-A-I-T-L-Y-N-N-E because my middle name is Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E, so I made her her name Caitlin with the E. And so, of course, no one ever gets it right. So, so I'm glad you asked because no, it's Caitlin's Law, but with an E at the end of Caitlin. So, um, and it's, uh, we have a Facebook page there that um, I post on quite frequently. Yeah, so I highly encourage everybody to do that. Check that out. See how you guys can support. If you guys are, are you know out there and you guys actually have connections or whatever it is, make sure you guys get in, get get in connection and see what he, see how you guys can help to actually get something like this passed. Because in all reality, something like this should not be happening. But I I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. I know it's rough. I know it's tough. It's it's an awful situation, but it's also an important cause that that you know you could be making some really big change uh, that could be helping other people's lives too. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And then everybody else as well. Again, we'll, we'll post the links underneath so that way uh, you guys can go check that out, see how you guys can support as well. Um, and again, if you guys can go to Apple Podcasts and, and subscribe, uh, you'll get notified anytime that there is another, a new show. Also, too, she had mentioned uh, Ken uh, Good. You can actually go and see We did a podcast with him, uh, I believe, last month or so. So you guys can go check that out. He talks a lot more in detail about a lot of these kinds of bonds and things like that. So definitely uh, check that out as well. And then we will catch you guys all next time.